somebody on the line, don't we? Anthony Costanzo, left tackle, Indianapolis coach, joining us here on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Of course, camp starting next Thursday out at Westfield. AC, are you ready to rock? Are you? How's the body feeling? You good to go? Body's feeling great. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is time. So uh, the body knows it. Mind knows it. Ready to go. All right. No hamstring injuries, right? Please don't jinx me because at this point last year I also didn't have a hamstring injury, so it was like it was like my last day of training. So yeah, as of right now we're good. <laughs> Seriously, what kind of regimen yeah. were you doing? And after what happened last year, are you more cautious and just say, you know what, let's just make sure I get back in there uh, with all the guys in in one piece? Yeah. So last year I was doing a lot more running, like just pure sprinting. I, I just was doing a lot more volume of running, and I think my biggest mistake was the fact that that morning. You know, I'm like, man, something doesn't feel right. But I'm like, you know, if I don't run today, then the next time something doesn't feel a little right, I won't, I'll, I'll be able to not do it that time. I didn't want to make a habit out of it. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to grind through. And then I pulled my hamstring, and I was ready to just punch myself in the friggin' face. And I'm like, <laughs> I knew, I knew my body wasn't feeling right. So I've become a little bit, I actually listen to what my body tells me now. It, it, unfortunately, it took that for me to, for me to do that. But, uh, yeah, if, if I'm not feeling right, I'll uh, I'll just take it down a notch or so. Still learning. That's always good. So, look, a year ago this time, we didn't know what Andrew's situation was going to be. You got a hamstring injury. Nobody outside of Carolina had ever heard of Darius Leonard coming off a terrible season. I mean, questions everywhere. This year, ESPN.com says you guys are the number one team in the in the NFL for the next three years. Everybody on the offensive line is getting love, and it's all wine and roses. Are, are we getting too much praise out of the gate this year? I mean, the funny thing is that whether you're getting crapped on or whether you're getting praise, it, it doesn't matter on Sunday. So it's still the same game regardless of what happens with what people are saying. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it can't really affect our preparation. It doesn't affect our how we play. It's just it's fun for the for, to, to look at the outside looking in. You've been around long enough, though. I mean, to, to go from a doormat to a darling like that, how, how do you handle that? And, and you, being one of the elder statesmen, do you feel you need to take the lead on something like this and set an example, maybe? Um, I, you know, I, it's it's kind of just a, the, the the old adage of just doing everything, you know, just preparing the same way regardless of what happens. I mean, it's uh, by taking the lead is that I'm going to come and do exactly what I always have done, do exactly what I did last year preparation-wise, kind of just, just keep doing what you're doing and, um, and, and, you know, obviously make improvements here and there and try to gain some information. But, um, yeah, regardless of, like I said, whether you're the doormat or the darling, it's still football. <laughs> hey, I got a couple of questions for you, like questions of I knew when, all right? I got three of them for you. Yep. From, from your perspective, I knew Andrew Luck was back and ready to kill it when – Oh, uh, he stepped foot on the field for the first time. <laughs> really? I mean, if he's yeah, I mean, if he's on the field, uh, yeah, he's he's Andrew. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, I was uh, I was probably one of the most least shocked people on how he played last year. <laughs> All right, I knew other teams' defensive linemen were going to get shown up on film on Monday from Quentin Nelson. When uh, I would say his first one-on-one of um, of training camp because he was going against. Um, uh, Danico Autry, who's a very good pass rusher, um, and he he wired him up. I mean, he he wired him up to the point where like he like lifted him up, and I'm like, this guy is a good player, and you just made him, you know, you just absolutely down. Now, don't get me wrong, Danico has come back and he's gotten Quentin a few times, and and they have good battles and one on ones. But that first one, everyone was like, okay, this kid's legit. <laughs> All right, w- when when did you know that Darius Leonard was legit? When did you believe like, oh wow, this guy's different? Uh, it was probably when Andrew actually told me, he's like, that kid, that 53 kid on our defense can play. You know, it was like, because you, you're, you're in training camp, you don't really know the rookies that much. Um, and, you know, you, you'd go, obviously I wasn't in training camp because of my hamstring, so I didn't have an opportunity to go against him. But Andrew was like, yeah, we got a kid on defense who can really play. And usually if, if Andrew's saying that as the quarterback and, you know, he, uh, he understands that this guy's disrupting some of his reads and disrupting the offense, then, yeah, yeah, he he knows what he's talking about. Anthony Costanzo joins us on the Payless Liquors Hotline, and uh, I, I'm just wondering the difference between Frank Reich's camp and Chuck Pagano's camp. Was there a noticeable difference last year? Um, no, I mean, I mean camp is camp. It's uh, 
it's it, the schedules are, are pretty are pretty similar. I mean, it's um, again, I I didn't participate in camp last year, so I, I'm kind of talking about what I saw. But um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, he. I would say Frank definitely takes care of us when like when when he feels like the energy is low. He kind of feels out where the team's at. He takes input from the uh, from the guys, which is great, um, and wants to make sure that everybody's at their best. Uh, obviously, come time for the regular season. Anthony, what did we learn in Kansas City last January? Uh, you can't believe that regardless of how good of a team we are, you got to bring your absolute best to beat the really good teams. I mean, it's it's um, come playoff time, you, you got to be playing your absolute best ball, and you know looking back at that game and I think a lot of the guys have talked about it that like it's crazy how you know a batted ball at the line of scrimmage which nobody really does anything wrong it's just a guy gets his hand up and bats a ball down we had like two or three of those in a row all of a sudden the offense stagnates and we start you know it's like all right we got to get something going but in reality you look back at it it's like nobody really did anything like there were there were no mistakes made necessarily so much as our rhythm just kind of got thrown off by a guy making a play here or there and um, yeah, you, you just learn that it's it's you just got to play your best ball come uh, come those that, that big time, um, and and be at the top of your game in the playoffs because that's when it, that's when it really really matters. And a lot of times that running game is something that can get you back into rhythm, and that was something building up once you came back last year. Once Marlon Mack came back, when the two of you got back, it really seemed like the running game went in that Kansas City game. Something happened there too. It was like you couldn't get the running game going. So I'm just interested in how you you look at the running game this year, how important it is, and how much further advanced you'll be with having uh, a year under your belt and everybody playing at such a high level and knowing you have the confidence now, knowing that you got running game yeah i mean having that confidence to to go out there and, and know that you can that you can you know close out games and con- control the ball and i mean the running game opens up a ton of stuff i mean that, that's kind of where everything comes from um it's great to have that to have that confidence and you know i love playing with marlon he finds those little holes and he's a guy who can take take the little play and turn it into a big one which is what the great running backs are able to do so it's it's really exciting to have him back there and to, to keep on getting better and to have him healthy and and playing his best ball as well Hey, I'm just curious of of the three of these guys. Who's the happiest right now with the addition of Justin Houston? You, Andrew, or Matt Eberflus? Who's happier that that he is a Colt and not a Chief? <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say I was going to say me for the reason that I get to go against him every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's uh, that's huge. You get a guy like that. Uh, it's great because he's a real physical player. So it's you know I've got I got to have my body in the right position when I block him on every play, and he takes advantage. Of, of mistakes so um he's going to be great to go against in practice to make sure that, that my technique is is good and i'm i'm really looking forward to having a, a good training camp with him a couple other things that are new you, you chris strausser he's he's your new offensive line coach and then you got howard mudd who's also there i guess as a consultant or whatever but to have that level of coaching uh available to you at 30 years old and what you've been through you got to be kind of like a young kid again right i I definitely feel like a young kid when Howard's around. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. shot fired. He coached me. That's yeah. how old Howard is. No, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's a lot of experience. Obviously, Chris has been coaching forever as well. I mean, um, at the collegiate level and teaching technique, and uh, we've got yeah, we've got a lot of experience in that room um, and a lot of information come. It's like in, in meetings, you got to have your ears open because you got information come from Chris. You got it coming from Howard. You got to come from all angles. So it's um, it's definitely going to be good for this offensive line. One of the things I loved about Howard when I was in Kansas City with him, he he would actually ask us how we wanted to block things. He, he what do you think? Yep. You know, um, is that is that kind of a first for you that your input was actually desired from from a coaching staff? We've had, we've had coaches in the past who have who have asked us, you know, how would you rather do this? Because ultimately, you know, they like they say you're you're on the field, and if I'm telling you to do it a way that that you don't feel comfortable doing, then uh, it's not going to be good. But a funny little story about Howard is that so he played uh, he played in Chicago back way back when, and he was asking me where where I'm from in Chicago, and, and I'm from a, a suburb that's pretty far out. I go, yeah, I'm from Lake Zurich. He goes, oh, that wasn't even a town when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yeah, th- there was maybe a stop side there, and he was right. I mean, it was all cornfields that what he was there, which is hilarious. Oh, he knows all that stuff. Uh, all right, yeah. Graham Park. How is Graham Park as far as a, a destination for camp? We know for for fans, it's awesome. What about for players? Yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely the best that we've had. I mean, it's been it's been great. Um, 
we've got, I mean, the, the accommodations in the hotel are great. We've got good beds. You know, that's, that's number one for me is how, how's the bed. So do you fit we've got good beds? I do. Yeah. We, we've got good beds to sleep in. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, the accommodations are great and everything is kind of located in such a way that it's easy to get to. I, I I'm, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a, a top notch uh, place to have camp. It's it's good. And I'm glad that it's great for the fans too, because if it's good for us and good for them, it's good for everybody. Hey, how often when you're on the road and you go check into a hotel, how often do you have to sleep like diagonally on a bed to make sure you can fit in it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, pretty much always, because even a king bed, it, it the, the length uh, I still can't just lay straight, uh, you know, straight away, or else my feet are off of it. So unless it's like California King, which the hotels don't have, my feet are hanging off, so I'm always diagonal. <laughs> All right. What are your must-haves for training camp? Um, uh, really just a good bed. Like, I mean, you don't bring uh, anything specific but, with you? Do, you? do you bring, like, pictures no. of the family? Do you, do you have a specific set of clothes? You, are, are you superstitious at all and have to have things? I do. I, I do not. I typically, so my, my birthday is usually either the first or second week of camp. It's uh, on August 9th, so... Uh, typically either my mom or my girlfriend, depending on who's in town or who's around, will make me a pistachio cake. So we will have the guys, we'll have the guys over and have, everyone gets a little slice of pistachio cake at some point. How do you camp, even so discover pistachio cake? He's Italian. I, 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 I grew up with it for some reason. I, yeah, I, I've always had pistachio cake. It's my favorite cake. So my, my mom started making it and my girlfriend started making it and we've got, yeah, so we, we always have a nice, and I still get like it'll be like, hey guys, after meetings, meet in my room for pistachio cake. <laughs> is there frosting on a pistachio cake? I don't even know. There's not, just some powdered sugar on top. Oh well, you got to have two cakes then, brother. <laughs> you need to have two. <laughs> hey, hazing incidents. I know it's probably frowned upon to say hazing, but you know you you like to get into the rookies a little bit, right? Uh, we don't do that much. Uh, you know, I, I find myself too exhausted during camp to really put any energy towards that. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, we, yeah, we'll have the rookies bring our pads in and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I would say if you're a rookie getting drafted, you're, you're pretty lucky as an offensive lineman coming to the Colts because we, uh, we don't do much, uh, in terms of hazing. I figure it's hard enough to be a rookie. You don't need more stuff happening on top of that. The Anthony Costanza joins us on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Got two more for you. A, a little bit of a serious question here because uh, Chris Ballard has talked about it. But uh, you're 30 years old now, and your contract's up at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Is there an, an expectation or a hope that you can get an extension done here? I mean, that'd be great. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, anytime you can be under contract and feeling good about it, that's always good. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I have confidence. I, I, basically, I just got to get stuff done on the field. Everything else kind of takes care of itself, so that's that's kind of mentality I'm in. Like you said, I'm 30. I'm I'm not. It's not going into my second contract where I'm super, you know, freaking out about like, you know, I got to make sure that I play or else this or else that. I'm just going out there and playing the game the way I always do, and uh, everything else kind of take care of itself the way I see it. Well, you had a really cap friendly deal too. Uh, your 16th highest paid in the offensive tackles right now, and you know, probably one of the top five in the league. Nate Solder and Tyron Smith were both guys you came in with and drafted at the same time. They've re upped yep. for long term deals. Is the money that important? That number? A lot of guys use that. Uh, I, I make such an you know they they want that number to to earn respect around the league. That that's what I'm really worth you really your last contract you said it's really that's not it i i just really want to be here and i want to win yeah i mean it's it, uh, you know like like you said i mean yeah as, as far as negotiations go if anybody in the, in the front office is hearing it yeah i, I need that, that big number that's, that's what i'm looking for <laughs> that's all i care about now uh yeah it's it's you're in respect around the league with your play and now it's not with how much you get paid i think guys guys see that and um and yeah again it's for me it's what what goes on on the field is the biggest biggest thing. All right, now when we were doing our, our Hardy shows and everything, uh, we had a, a grievance of the day or of the week or whatever. Yeah. It's something that Anthony Costanzo either saw or uh, experienced or something that just kind of stuck in your craw a little bit. You got any grievances yeah. for us? I do. I I, I I I take issue with all these guys who are getting real upset over Madden ratings. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm just sitting and I laugh because I'm like, like, you know, like it's, it's just simple video game stuff. Like there has to be balance. Like if, if a guy in a, in a fighting game has great defense, his offense isn't going to be great. Otherwise that person just goes and dominates the entire game. Like it's, there's like in, in any game, there has to be balance. So the, these video game 
people who are making the games are like, well, we gave this guy this rating. We, we got to put this guy down lower or else the team is just going to wipe everybody out and the game won't be fun. So just as there's always parody in the NFL, there has to be parody in freaking video games. And guys are like, ah, I've been slighted. This is a, a personal attack on me. It's like, no, it's just, it's just how the game works. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought you might yeah. uh, also have a grievance with maybe a couple of it. Well, who, who can get mad at Captain Andrew Luck? But uh, I don't know if you've seen your backup quarterback. Jacoby Brissett has got his tweet of the day, and it's just kind of oh. a random thought kind of a deal. Deep thoughts. They're not really very, they're not strong. I think, oh, they're, no, ter- yeah. I think they're terrific. I actually have seen those, some of them. Yeah, I, I wish I was there to, to just have a nice conversation with Jacoby on a couple of those. But <laughs> you know what? If it pops into his head, and he, 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 wants to, he wants answers. What better place than the Internet to get all kinds of random answers? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right, uh, last four days before camp look like what? Um, I'm be training. <laughs> I uh, obviously I'm not going to be doing a bunch of sprints because I learned my lesson last year. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to be making sure that uh, that I get some training in, and um, you know I, I want to make sure my body's right. I might do a little yoga, uh, just just a lot of that. And, and I've been real cycled on my eating this this year, so I'm going to stay on my diet to, and come to camp. Hopefully, my lowest body fat yet. <laughs> Which is what? Because if you're not, you know, twenty, forget about you. <laughs> I'm I'm below twenty. I'm I'm consistently. <laughs> Pretty decently below twenty, but I'm not going to give out throw out numbers here. I'm yeah, just, that's ridiculous. I'm, 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 look, I'm looking. To, I'm looking for it to be very good. Joe hasn't seen twenty since he was twelve. <laughs> twenty five <laughs> to thirty range is where you really need to be. I'd be like three sixty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you can still yeah. move, nobody cares. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week, man. Stay safe. All right. Yeah. And travel Sounds safe, good. and we'll catch up with you. All right. Have a good one.